So yeah, we want to welcome Colin, Garnett, and Wes back to the Whale Tank. I know they have a presentation and probably a, a video to share, and we just like to give them the floor. And uh, as they, like if they're pull, pulling the presentation, oh, I got Garnet. Okay, and uh, you know, just uh, you know, introduce yourself as you're you know pulling up your presentation. I appreciate it, Garnet. Right on. Yeah, it's it's just good to be uh, back here with you guys again. <laughs> Look forward to some tough questions tonight. <laughs> That's right. Hey, the audience, they're, they're already interacting, Garnet. <laughs> Colin, they're, they're, they're ready for you. So we've got a lot of people in the room asking, you know, happy to be here again. Good to see you guys back. Yeah, fantastic. I just have one quick question. Um, do we have a show of how many people were here last time versus how many new people are here? Do we kind of know? or? Uh, well, from these statistics right here that I'm looking at, um, but I only get – from a couple of the sources. Like I said, we're streaming on five different places right now. So I only get a total from uh, two of them. So, but from my view right now, we have more people on tonight than we did the first time. Well, that's fantastic. But we do get a lot of repeat viewers because there's people coming from all over the world. So it's four o'clock in the morning where we have a lot of people uh, that are usually tuned in. So they might not make it, you know, it's Friday night, four o'clock in the morning, they might be sleeping and waiting, catching on the replay. Yep. Well, replays are good. That's what I do a lot of times. I, I join for the first little bit. And uh, then I like to uh, watch replays and actually take uh, studious notes so that the next time I can ask better questions. And because when you watch it live, you kind of get caught up in the moment and things just kind of go by you. And uh, thank goodness for replays because we can find out a lot of things that we might have missed or, you know, phone dings. For those people that are new that are joining us right now, my name's Colin and I'm the CEO and founder of of uh, Starwire, which is part of Matrix Blockchain Technology. It's one of our flagship products. And I'm on with our other co-founder, Garnet Campbell. And uh, this really started back in 2015. Um, I was the CEO of um, actually, I was the chairman of a public company called Imagination Park Entertainment, and I was making trips down to Hollywood at least every two weeks. I, I live in Vancouver, Canada, and so I would go down there, and we had an office on the Universal back lot. And the one thing that I noticed a lot is, you know, in the Jack Webb room, if you've ever been on the Universal back lot, they have a big boardroom there. Uh, there was a lot of people complaining about things like getting paid intellectual property not being, you know, honored, um, people getting, you know, ripped off for lack of a better term. And I'm from the music business. So uh, I don't know if those people, maybe I should show that slide just real quick, um, just to give a little bit of a background. Um, I'll share my screen. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing I did last week, but I'll zip through those. So for those people that were here last time, bear with me, but it's given the newcomers and those people watching the replay, just a little recap. So to go back into my history, I toured all, all over the world for about uh, two decades uh, in a class, classic rock band uh, doing big festivals like that. There's me and uh, I played with a guy named Randy Backman, you might know from the Guess Who and Backman Turner Overdrive big songs like taking care of business. And uh, we played on stages with Neil Young and Ringo Starr and just the list goes on and on. All my favorite bands, um, Three Dog Night, Doobie Brothers and toured all around the world. So that was my introduction to sort of the entertainment business. And I grew up in that for 20 years. Um, when we put together a public company for Imagination Park Entertainment, uh, we were both music and film primarily going towards film and virtual reality. And it morphed into an augmented reality company, which I, don't, I, I still have a lot of stock in it, but I exited the company back in 2015. But during this time, I realized that there was a huge problem. And you know, when you can see the future, you can spend all your energy trying to validate your ideas. You know, You always try to talk your wife into something. Believe me, Bitcoin's gonna be good. And she says, you know, it's very risky, but until it finally catches up, you can take a risk or, uh, and you can solve the problem. So basically we'd had a problem and uh, I started a new company called Matrix Blockchain Solutions. And the mission of that company was to, and still is, to build applications that solve real world problems. 
and Houston, we have a problem. And I went over this last time, but many creators just don't get paid fairly for their work. There's so many, all you have to do is Google that. You'll, you'll see evidence both in big Hollywood blockbuster movies and all the way down to indie films. And so a powerful few control the num numbers, uh, especially in, in places like Hollywood. And I think our vision was to revolutionize the way that content creators get credit for their intellectual property and actually get paid when their work is consumed. What a concept. And so, you know, things like Darth Vader not getting paid because Return of the Jedi still isn't profitable. Hmm. And I think the guy on the call last, I forget which guy said he passed away. So that's a sad thing for his family. And, you know, when Harry Potter is one of the biggest grossing movies of all time and they still post a $167 million loss. Every film, they do their best to make sure everything ends up at zero so they don't have to pay a lot of the other people. Um, and, you know, th the list goes on and on and Garnet can talk about this. There's suing and Disney and, and dishonest people. Uh, it, it's just a, it's a, it's a problem. And the more I went to LA and the more I sat in the studios, I heard it all the time. And we had a film on Netflix and we were waiting for audited results and we couldn't get any of the numbers. And our shareholders were saying, when are we gonna see the numbers from Netflix? And I would always have to get on a investor call and tell them, well, we're waiting. We're at the mercy of these distributors. They have to report, we have to figure out what's going on. And then we had another problem. We had a problem of getting money to crew that was overseas. We had some in Romania, we had some in Spain and they were sitting there on the clock and they had no money. And we were trying to get money to them and we had to go through Western Union. And I'm sure you guys can imagine what the fees for sending millions of dollars overseas to a, a film crew uh, for their payroll is gonna cost in Western Union fees. But our accountant <clears throat> or our account assistant, Kelly, she had to drive across the US border because we're from Vancouver in order to get money from a US bank into US dollars over in Spain so that they could cash it in so people could get paid. Meanwhile, we're paying for extra nights and hotel rooms and food. And I mean, it's just, it's nuts. And I thought to myself, when I first discovered blockchain, I thought, wow, a smart decentralized platform that always pays you first. Can you imagine you can go across the border with a thumb drive, you know, if you've got, you know, tokenization. And of course this is back in 2015. So the, the concept was a, a decentralized registry where you could timestamp your own intellectual property and then you could make a smart contract. So you make a deal with people and you're 50-50 if we write a song together, let's make that into a contract and then bake it right into the digital asset. And then when you share that, you can release the content to the world and you know that the smart contract will click in uh, whenever that's consumed. So this was a Pollyanna view back in 2015, 2016, but it's real now. We've all heard of NFTs. And, and uh, so with that said, Starwire has a plan to become a superhero for the film industry and especially for the independents and the young people starting out. You know, imagine whenever someone orders a movie and we all do that, everyone gets paid instantly. And you can have fractional ownership of these films you could create. So you can have not just one or two big investors, but you could crowdfund these films, which we're gonna talk about tonight, and actually have a fractional ownership program where people that are fans can actually own a little piece and collect revenue from some of these projects. So, I'm not going to go too much into the detail of the wallets and how, how we're going to be able to use the tokens uh, later on and our technology partners. Um, this is all stuff that we can talk about at a later date. You can download this deck from our site. Uh, our community is one of the most important things. We want to connect talent and money. So we want to be the people in the middle that can really help people to get a leg up, to be able to get their their um, projects off the ground. And Garnet will talk about that because we've done it for one of his projects. And um, I just I just think we're in the most exciting time ever. And so we're, we're offering these Starwire tools, uh, which Garnet will actually give you a little quick demo of it. But we have access. We have access to all the big guys. But not only that, we have access to the schools. 
uh, Garnett's a film teacher. Um, we've worked with some of the A-list actors and most of the major studios, both in music and in film. And if you can imagine a digital agent like Jerry Maguire representing your content at every transaction, show me the money. You know, that's kind of the whole idea behind it. I like to use the, the, the analogy of when you are in a store and you take a shirt off the rack and it's got one of those white buttons on it that'll beep before you go out of the store. Well, imagine your film or your movie or your artwork has something like that so that before people walk out with it, um, it's gonna alert, the, the smart contract's gonna kick in. So if you can imagine a secure platform that helps creators monetize their content globally while providing their investors with transparency and confidence using smart contracts to ensure their profits, um, you can help people get credit and recognition for their work and get paid when money moves and you become their superhero. So that's kind of the basis behind Starwire. And I'm just gonna show you this little clip and uh, hopefully you can hear the audio. If you can't, somebody uh, stop me, but um, I'll let her roll here. We were born to create. From childhood, we learned to make sounds, make a mess, make things up, and make and build connections. We imagined worlds, and we sought to find our own voice. Yes, we were born to create, and we worked hard. We became artists, musicians, and writers. We see the future and paint our world. Our secrets become our stories or songs to keep for ourselves, share with those we love, or even if we're lucky enough to be loved around the world. Even when the future is uncertain, we keep doing what we love because we are all born to create. What you create can shape our future, and the future for you must be protected. When your passion moves people, people move money. It's time for creators to be paid fairly. So to protect what you create and ensure that you can enjoy the rewards of your own unique creative magic, that's when we bring you Starwire. Wait for it. When money moves, you get paid. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I love that. When money moves, you get paid. There you go. That, that's a statement right there. <laughs> yeah, excellent.